muscle truck. Listen to this air. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. This is kind of the second ish, third ish part series. I'm still making the videos now on this series. So, this is part two or three of the video of the Holly Sniper. So, uh, what we're going to do today is we've done a startup, we know everything works. I've actually been driving this truck around a little bit now. I haven't been filming quite everything that we've been doing because I've just been letting it learn. And we've run into a few little snags here and there. But it's really minor things that I can change in the advanced settings of the Sniper. So I went ahead also and uh, got some cool stuff for Christmas, including the nice little breather on the top that says Sniper. Kind of stealthy, I like it. And another issue that I wanted to talk about before we get into today's video is heat has been a huge problem. So what I've done is took some DEI wrap and uh, these headers now get extremely hot, I guess from where the fuel mixture is so more efficient, you know, it's pushing all that air out. So uh, hot air is coming out where it used to, it was just pig rich. Now it's actually, you know, efficient. And I'm gonna walk through you guys a couple things that uh, we need to change. Uh, one of the things we need to change in the tune is the startup. Uh, the cranking fuel is a little low and I've also heard that uh, they do this intentionally, they keep it pretty lean on the crank, initial crank. So we may turn that up a little bit, not a lot, it just needs to bump just a little because every now and then I have to, you know, crank it two times. But for the most time, it's really good once it gets rolling, but it's that first start of the day is it might fire and it might take two tries. So we're going to take care of that, we get it to one crank just like an EFI car. The other thing we need to do today is uh, we got to change our learn temperature. So the muscle truck runs extremely cool. I don't know if anybody else may or may not have this problem, but this truck runs like 160 all the time. Has a 180 thermostat in it. This thing's not supposed to come on until 180, 190. And the coolant temp in it cruising is about 140 to 145, 150 on a warm day. Summer day, you might see 160, 170. So, I mean, I've got to change those parameters in there. Which is why I brought the laptop, just in case I need it. And uh, we should be able to self-tune this with the kit. And uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys, I actually made a bracket to uh, adjust everything with and set my screen up. It looks pretty good. <clears throat> so the screen is now uh, more visible and is not in this temporary spot. It's gonna be hard to see it, guys, but back behind here, there is a bracket, an L bracket. It's attached with 3M tape on the bottom and it has button head screws in the top of it with some bolts on the back side to hold it so I can actually still pull this out and that's kind of why I left it sticking out was so I can remove the screen if I need to get in here and adjust anything for whatever reason and you know I didn't have to drill any holes here into the actual cubby hole so I can save that. But I think it looks pretty good. I'll do something with the wire later. It's not really a deal breaker for me. Um, obviously it's more of a race truck, so I don't really care too much about what it looks like, but I want it to work, and it definitely works. Gave me some room for my shifter too, this little her shifter I made. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Well guys, uh, changing out the bracket here, I don't give out part numbers a lot, but this is one of them that ended up working for us. It's a fast bracket, of course it is a Holly product, but it does work with it, and it also comes with the, uh, hardware and everything that you're going to need to put your cable through. Now if you're OBS, you know, you're going to need one of these. And I've got my old throttle return spring. So I may dig through here and see what I can find. But I just want to show you guys, we took the Mickey Mouse bracket off and now this actually fits with no interference. It does not bottom out. Looks super cool. So we're going to put all our hardware back here. And the bracket's fairly stout. And I like that it's anodized black. So that's pretty nice. But we're going to go ahead and throw this on now. Hopefully that'll take care of some of the throttle position woes we had. The old bracket had uh, basically fabbed up some stuff to make it work. Just to drive the truck and make sure everything was sound. And now that we know it is. We we'll definitely recommend this bracket if you have a 4150 uh, normal Holley carburetor. They work great with them. But... When you go EFI, 
you're going to have to make you some spacers because there's not enough room here. As you can see, the difference right away there's more room for this throttle bracket and everything so there you go uh you make sure and use this part number this fast throttle cable bracket if you have a sniper system on an old body style truck and you want something super simple that works really good all right guys so the new bracket is on and it's actually pretty easy to install so i'm gonna run over this with you real quick so you've got a bracket here at the rear just like for the 4.3, because that's what this actually was, was a V6 truck, you can see there. It's got a slide and two bolts, pretty easy to take care of. And then the spring at the bottom, put one inside the other and give it just a little bit of tension. We're at throttle, you know, not a lot of tension because we're wanting a throttle position sensor to make sure he's at zero when he's idling. And we've also verified that when you push the pedal, the barrel's open all the way. They do. So everybody's happy there. So definitely check out Fast's bracket. I'm sure Holly has one as well, but be sure and buy the bracket for this uh, particular unit. Now the, the part number for the sniper system is a 550-516 for the gold, but you'll notice there'll be a 550-ish part number. Uh, and this is your base kit, 650 horse, uh, 4150 series. Make sure and use that uh, exact throttle bracket. It actually looks pretty good too. So I just wanted to update you guys on that before we do a road test here. All right guys, so here's a prime example of why you need EFI. He's sitting out here holding the throttle on this carburetor trying to get it to warm up as it gagged me to death in here. So anyway, back to the future here. Um, what I actually ended up doing here guys to make this thing learn a little sooner is, uh, let's go back to, you wanna click on the little injector looking thing here and start up enrichment okay so this is something else i went ahead and done for uh this is outside of what i was talking about but uh i noticed that it's cranking a little hard so i went ahead and turned up fuel uh, at 40 and 60 degrees as you can see where i keyed in i bumped it about three pounds so that should help the startup a little bit uh, and the other thing we also wanted to do we go back to our uh, learning here we go temperature enrichment so when you're on this icon if you want to change how soon the thing learns which I definitely wanted to because the muscle truck runs wicked cool anything at a hundred percent is learning anything above that is not learning so basically what I done was I went to the 120 degree mark and I said I want you to learn so I went into these values and I keyed in if you right click over the value like right here i can click this guy you see i dropped into 99 if i want it to say 100 i go right click set value and i'm going to change this to 100 you can see now it's 100 and that'll set the coolant temp now to where this guy's going to start learning at 120 degrees all right guys i want to put this back into the uh computer for our handheld unit Like so, here's my nifty mount I built. Works pretty good. You just slide this guy back up in there. Okay, so now we need to upload the changes that we just made, which are very minor, but they're basic tweaks that need to be made. Okay, <clears throat> he's booting up, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in here to file. Uh... There it is, global configuration settings. And what I wanna do now is I wanna upload what's from the SD card to the ECU, so let's hit upload. And it's gonna tell me, we're gonna upload this file to the ECU, and I say yes, because we just changed that file on the laptop. Cool. Okay, now, turn ignition off four seconds, and da 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 for it to take effect. So, uh, I'm gonna open the uh, door and let's give this guy a cold start. All right, boys, let's see if that took effect. Oh, almost. We may have to add a little more fuel. Go back to our monitors. I'm still learning the gauges. Let's go back to multi-gauge vitals. One more start, come on, old girl. There she 
goes. All right, guys, so we may need to add a little touch, just a drop more fuel. It almost did it on the first start, but it looks like I need to add about three, two, three pounds more. I added two or three there. Now, also one thing to keep in mind is it is 73 degrees. So that means next time around, when I go to my log and I get to the 70, 60, 70 degree mark, we need to bump that fuel on the initial cranking just a hair. Now it did help it. It did help it, I will admit. Last time, guys, it took me three or four times to do this. This time, it took a little minute for it to crank, but once it synced up, man, it took off. All right, boys, so it's out here learning. We're going for a little drive in it, see how it does. Oh, it's nice and smooth. nice is it's there it goes starting to go and it, when it hits a closed loop it starts to learn and uh cool and temp sensor saying 175 so we're it's actually a little warmer today so it's really a good day to get this thing out and ride it we may hit the parkway and give this thing a few rips but first i'm just going to drive it around nice and easy and uh you know let it learn nothing too crazy here we don't want to go wild here's cruising speed let you guys know what fifth gear does in this truck with 342s and an NV3500. So at 50 miles an hour, you're turning about 14, 1500 RPM. So not bad. <clears throat> you can see we're learning. Still going. It's going to be doing that for a while. So we're definitely going to have to drive this thing around. But guys, super impressed. You know, other than just a little bit of tuning, I've got my laptop with me, so I will be able to adjust the cranking parameters if we need to. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna have a problem. So, um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm super thrilled. It's so awesome. So if you guys are even thinking about doing this system, you know, do a little research, but you know, don't let the wiring and the new technology scare you. It's really not that bad. Uh, so anyway, let's drive it around a little bit. I'll pick it back up when we get toward uh, some higher RPMs and uh, see how well it learns. All right, boys, so we spent a little time driving the old muscle truck around, and as you can see, the learn is already getting better. At 15%, minus 15, it's still pulling some fuel out, but man, this thing is a rocket ship, guys. Just did a few pulls in it, and oh my gosh, it's so much better. Uh, another thing I noticed is actually this truck used to smoke a little bit when you got on it. That's just where it was so just rich. Now, it is no smoke at all. I mean, it is so solid. Sorry for the wind noise. I've got the windows down because it's 65 degrees here in Tennessee the day after Christmas, so I had to get it out. And of course, the bald eagle button still works good. Uh, we've demonstrated the bald eagle button. If you haven't seen that already, go back and check out the cutout install that we did on this truck. It was truly awesome. We got Dad behind us there in the 67. He's got his car out today. It's running really good. So, uh, yeah, this is this is awesome stuff, guys. So, if, if you haven't done it already, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm gonna get this thing home and wash it up here, and might give it a few revs. But uh, that's kind of wrapping it up for the sniper install, boys. It's uh, it's went really well, and I'll have to say that uh, if you haven't. Know, giving it some thought definitely go check out Holly's website and <clears throat> read all the reviews watch the videos uh, there's tons of information out there on them but uh, do look into this guys if you're if you got an old body style truck with a carburetor on it you want to put the fuel injection back in it make it smart you know look at this thing guys it's almost self-tuned all the way we're at six percent there at a couple places in the throttle so it's just so awesome Let's get this thing back home though, and we're gonna give her a nice wash. Love the old 67. However, the muscle truck. <laughs> oh, it's nuts, boys! Listen to the air. <laughs> Oh, bald eagle button closed. All right, listen to this air. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. That's just awesome. So, yeah, boys, I think we're going to 
cap it off there. And if you guys remember, remember how it used to run backwards during shutoff because we had the timing to advance. Watch this. No drama. Yeah. Oh, uh, thing looks so good. One day I will have an old Camaro to match the old truck. Well, there you go, boys. That is the Holly Sniper install on the muscle truck. Of course, you got Dad's old '67 here. I love this car. He's got a little bit of stuff left to finish up, but. This car here is a D-Stroke 350. It runs really, really good. And he's gonna pull it up here. All right, cut it a little bit here. Oh. All right, straight. There we go. Perfect. Had to guide him on. Four post is always a pain. Uh, no, keep going. A little bit, a little bit. Now, there you go. <laughs> it don't sound too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Definitely still runs pretty good, that's for sure. But there you go, boys. If you haven't done it already, be sure and subscribe and uh, go check out all the other series of the Sniper install. And I'll give you guys a quick look at the under, under the hood here before we get too far along. Make sure nothing's melted under here. Looks like our heat wrap did the trick. Did a good job keeping those wires insulated. So those headers were getting wicked, wicked hot. Did several good pulls on the way home. I did not film that though because it's impossible to literally shift gears and, and do that. So that's that's why you guys didn't see any pulls. But uh, it made a huge difference in this truck. So if that isn't a testament to Sniper, I don't know what else is because you guys literally seen everything from mismatched plug wires, something stupid, just stupid simple to you know, putting a fuel pump in that was very straightforward. The self-tuning was very straightforward. The wiring, I did all the wiring myself. Really wasn't that bad. Um, it looks intimidating when you get it out of the box, I will admit, but it's really not that bad. So if you guys are even thinking about doing this, you know, have no doubts in it, to, you know, that it's going to work. But realize if you buy this kit and something happens, maybe it idles high, or you know there's something else going on then you need to go in and, and read the instructions because you've probably got something wrong it's not the kit it's probably something you've done and that's what i kept telling myself and every time we had a problem you know we were able to solve it just because we weren't you know, we were blaming the kit you know we kept double double checking ourselves more than doubting the kit so one thing i will admit to that we did wrong that you want to check immediately is the throttle position so as soon as you start it, you may have to adjust the screw to get the thing to idle right, and that's fine. However, once it idles up to temp, what you'll need to do then is adjust the screw until the, the idle air control is between 2 and 10%. So we opted to get like 7, so it was like real fine measurement, you know, just real fine tuning. And once we got it to idle at like 6-7% on the idle air control, we cycled the key, you know, you wait 4 or 5 seconds, turn it back on and you're good. If you don't do that, you're gonna have that weird idle thing that everybody talks about, which is actually just the thing idling at 15 or 3000. It's because they haven't went in and done that. You'd never set that. And you never set your base timing. You know, there's, there's certain things in there. If you just read the manual and walk through it, it'll work. But you've, you've got to read the manual. You've got to follow the instructions. If you don't do that and you just go sticking that O2 sensor wherever or in any angle, this kit is not going to work. So that is it. Just follow the directions and it will work. Uh, Holly does have a tech line. I never had to call them. Not once. Knock on wood. Hopefully we never have to call them. But uh, that's it.
that's the whole install. You know, th this is the third video in the series. If you haven't done it already, go back and check out the teardown and the, uh, you know, unboxing and everything. And then the second video is going to work through some of the bugs with the first startup. And, you know, just uh, be sure and subscribe. Check out all the other content and, you know, follow the build for sure because this thing is not done we are not done yet i've got coal overs cow tracks we want to do interior and paint so there is tons of stuff and i know some of you guys are thinking you're crazy for wanting to paint it but if if you've seen the truck in person it you know we're our we're own worst critics i know where all the little bugs are in it and i want to get it straight so i'm going to do that and probably clean up a little bit more stuff but you know this is uh this is just the current state i am going to be getting this painted tomorrow so i may film that because i've got a guy that's going to do uh you know some pinstriping and stuff hand painting the holly stopper on the lid so that is going to be super cool but uh, i guess i'm going to cap it off right there guys and i want to thank you all for watching and following the muscle truck you know leave a like comment let me know what you think and if you're having any problems you know drop drop a comment below we'll try to see if you know between me and everybody else reading them can help you out um, thank you guys for watching and until next time I'll catch you in the next video I'm out alright boys so finishing touch on the sniper lid is about to take place so we've come to the place of uh, dreams with Mr. Garrett right here you vlogging all the way in there? yeah I'll vlog all the way in there you're not going in there? <laughs> come on buddy you gotta help me out here there's the man what are you doing? <laughs> Check this thing out. You think you can handle that one? Maybe. <clears throat> What's going on there? <laughs> that go red or what color that right there go? Thought about either, yeah, either the holly red and the sniper white or vice versa, maybe. The red goes red? Yeah, and maybe do the holly white. White. Yeah, that way it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Or just whatever you're feeling. <laughs> or if you, if you got any other really cool ideas, <clears throat> I figured you could uh, give me some input on it. You accept all major credit cards? Watching. <laughs> Watching. Is it so piece, that piece of cake? <laughs> appreciate you doing that for me. When you litter that holly on there, you gotta take a hair or your mustache and take a knife and split it, split it in four pieces. <laughs> so that's the rule. You got a few. I was gonna say you got a few there. What you got there?